because you demanded it, grapes, wallpaper, ugly. You asked for it, so you ask and you shall receive. All right, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about comparing and ordering rational numbers. And we've talked about rational numbers. Remember, rational numbers are any number, positive, negative, that includes integers, fractions, and decimals, okay? So now that we've talked about what they are, we've put them on a number line, vo both vertically and horizontally, now we have to put them in order and compare them and see if they're alike, see if they're different, things like that. And we're gonna talk a little bit today about how to do that, all right? So first of all, we need to kind of review the whole number line thing because this is very important and remembering positive and negative numbers on the number line. So let's look at this number line that I have behind me. And of course, when you go right with a number line, that means the numbers are going to get bigger. You go left of zero, they get smaller, okay? And of course, the left of zero, you're getting negative numbers, the right of zero, you're going to get positive. And also, you've got to remember when you're dealing with negative numbers, the further left that you go on the number line away from zero, the smaller the number is going to be. The ba and basically, it's gonna be the opposite of what you've known all of your life. Usually, when you see a big number, you think, oh, it's big, it's big. But with negatives, it's the exact opposite. The bigger the number on the negative, the smaller the actual value is, okay? So you've gotta remember that, and that is going to be key when you're comparing and ordering these rational numbers. So let me give you an example of comparing two rational numbers. So we've got negative seven, and we're going to compare it with a positive five. And remember, if you don't see a sign, it's a positive. So what we're going to do by comparing them is that is not a zero, not the letter O. Okay, I'm not putting spelling in here with math. Don't worry about that. We'll stick with math. This is where we're going to compare. We're gonna use the greater than, less than, or equal to signs to figure out um, which one is bigger than the other one or smaller than the other one, or maybe sometimes they might even be equal. All right, so what we need to do is we need to look at the first number, negative seven, and we're comparing it with a positive five. So, which one is bigger? Well, remember, if you've got a negative, the negative is always going to be smaller than a positive. Using common sense, you look at the sign, and the signs are different, that gives you kind of an advantage. So we know since negative seven and a positive five, well, negative seven is always going to be less than a positive, no matter what the positive is, so we know that negative seven is less than positive five. So we put our sign. Easy enough, right? Yeah, that's the easy part. It gets a little harder, and I'm going to show you how. Because remember, rational numbers, positive and negatives, they're integers, and remember integers are whole numbers, but rational numbers are also decimals and fractions. Ugh. So now we can compare those, but it's not always going to be I'm comparing a fraction with a fraction or a decimal with a decimal. Sometimes it gets mixed up and we've got to figure out, okay, how do we do that? So I'll show you a good example. That just looks plain icky, doesn't it? We got a decimal, and we're comparing it to fraction. Mm. And here's not so easy either because they're both negative. So we can do two things. One of them is we can make them both fractions by taking 85 hundredths and making it into a fraction. Here's the thing though. Taking this and making it into a fraction, there's a bunch of simplifying and stuff like that makes it kind of tough. So the easier part, now you can do that. If you want to do that, go right ahead. Not a problem. And we sometimes you have to do that. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But probably the easiest thing for this problem is to take the fraction 
and make it into a decimal, then compare the two. Okay. So you may have forgotten how to take, take a fraction and make it into a decimal, but I'm going to show you, give you a little refresher to it. You should know by now. If you don't know, shame on you, but I'm going to show you anyway, all right, because I like you. I like you a lot, okay? So let's look at this. We've got our fraction, and remember, to take a fraction and make it into a decimal, we take the denominator, we take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. Numerator divided by the denominator, which basically means the top number goes on the inside, the bottom number goes on the outside. Okay? Now, we all know that 4 cannot go into 3 evenly because 4 is bigger. So we know what we have to do is we have to put a decimal right after that 3 like so. Don't forget to bring your decimal up and then add that 0. Okay? So now 4 we know can go into 30. How many times? Right here. Oh, that's right, 7. You're right. 7 times 4 is, right, 28. We have a remainder, but in 6th grade, we don't like remainders, so we add another 0, bring it down. How many times can 4 go into 20? Yeah, you guessed it, 5. There we go. There's our decimal for 3 fourths, but do not forget, we've got our negative sign. Don't forget to go back and look and see if you need to put a negative sign in front of them. There we go. Now we can compare both of them because they're both the same. They're both decimals. So let's compare them. Best way to do this, line up the decimals. Okay, now, here's the real problem. Remember, when we're dealing with negatives, the bigger the number, the smaller it actually is. So take that into account when you're looking at it. Don't fall into the trap of looking at numbers the way you have all of your life, as everything is positive, and the bigger the number, that means it's a big, it's bigger, okay? Don't fall into that trap. That's why it's important to look at your signs and make sure that if they're both negative, that the bigger the number, the smaller it actually is. So knowing that, we've got 85 hundredths with 75 hundredths. Knowing that they're both negative, 85 hundredths is going to be the smaller one because it's the farthest to the left on the number line of the two. So knowing that, then we know that 85 hundredths is less than, excuse me, negative 85 hundredths. Don't forget that negative negative 85 hundredths is less than negative 3 fourths. There you go. Pretty easy, right? Okay, let's do another one. Just in case. Sometimes what they're going to ask you for is they're going to give you sets of numbers and they weren't, won't all be the same. So, and sometimes they're gonna ask you to put them from least to greatest or greatest to least. You always need to make sure that you read the directions. Directions are key, people. It takes two seconds. Read the directions and make sure that you're following those directions. So, let's do one of those. We're gonna go from least to greatest, smallest to biggest. And let's take three numbers. Let's say, let's go with decimals. Okay, now, first thing we need to do is we need to kind of check ourselves and make sure that we're not in some little dreamland and we're using a little bit of common sense. 
Now remember, we're going from least to greatest. Now, we go back, we look. Okay, let's think about our number line, and let's think about negative numbers and positive numbers. The bigger the negative number, the smaller it's going to be. Now, if we look at these, you might notice something about one of the, num one of the numbers that you might not see with the other ones. Because remember, rational numbers are positive, negative, decimals, integers, fractions. Okay, so think, keep that in mind. Now, if you've noticed and you're paying attention, this one's negative and the other two are positive. Now, without even blinking, knowing that, you know that one of these is going to be the least, the, the, the lowest one is going to be the smallest one before anything else, just because of that sign. Because of that negative and the other two are positive, you know for sure that this one is going to be the first one because we're going from least to greatest. So, that's our smallest one. And then all we have to do is compare the other two. So they're both positive. So we can go back to that mode that we've been going through with positive numbers since we've been counting, since we were itty bitty. Okay? So the bigger the number, the bigger it is. So I compare two tenths, six tenths. Well, which one's bigger? Well, six tenths. So since we're going from least to greatest, this one's going to be our last one, and it only leads one for the middle. easy, right? Okay. All right. So let's do one more with fractions and decimals. Mix it up a little bit. Once again, let's kind of check on the real world of all of this too. Look at our signs before we do anything. We've got two negatives and we're going from least to greatest. So we know that if there's a positive in there, we know that it's going to probably be the greatest, especially if the other ones are negative. So we already know what our last one is going to be. So now we have to compare the other two, the negatives together. Problem though. One's a fraction, one's a decimal, okay? The easiest way to do this is probably convert this fraction into a decimal. Remember, how we do that? You should. You take the numerator, the top number, and divide it by the denominator, the bottom number. Set it up just like that, okay? We know eight can't go into one. We add our decimal bring our decimal up, add our zero, eight can now go into 10. How many times? Well, of course, one. We don't like remainders in sixth grade, bring down our zero. Eight will go into 20 two times. Remainder once again, bring down our zero. 8 will go into 40 five times. You were sweating that we might have a repeating decimal, weren't you? Mm -hmm. So now we know that negative 1 8 as a decimal is negative 125 thousandths. So now we can compare those two decimals. So let's line them up. And remember, when you've got something like 6 tenths, it has zeros behind it as far as you need them. And if you need to add them to compare those, those decimals, go ahead. Add as many as you need. So we're looking at all of these. And we know that since we're dealing with negatives, the bigger the number, the smaller it is. The, least the, the, the lower the value of it is, okay? The least amount that it is. So if we look and we compare, which one's the smallest one? Of course, this one. So now we can put them all in order. Remember, the positive is going to be the last one, so we can go ahead and put that at the end. The smallest one is this one, so the middle number is going to be that. Don't forget your signs. And then, of 
course, this one. Right there, okay? Hopefully that clears things up and you now know how to compare and order rational numbers.